Okay, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Daniel Cuff. I'm the Head of International at University of East London. Uh, and I'd really like to welcome you all um, to everyone who's registered this morning for our University of East London webinar series. Uh, today's webinar is titled My Computer Science Placement Year. University of East London is UK's number one careers focused universities, and our graduates are industry ready, uh, 4.0 ready today. Today's webinar will focus on how to get the most from your placement year here in the UK once you graduate from your master's in science, uh, computer science. This is a genuinely exciting opportunity that allows you to put into practice the skills you have learned during your 12 months postgraduate degree and combine this with internationally recognized work experience, working in one of the most vibrant, dynamic, multicultural cities in the world here in London. This combination of your globally recognized postgraduate degree your work experience will genuinely help you stand out in a very often crowded work marketplace. Uh, today's webinar will be led by my colleagues, Dr. Saeed from the uh, School of ACE, our Architecture, Computing and Engineering School. We have Joyce, um, who is our student placement officer. She'll be a key member of the team that will help you find the right placement for you in the right sector that you would like to pursue once you leave the university. We have two of our current students, Merlin and Zach, who are here to talk about their experiences. Um, in the background, working away, um, helping with the live chat is my colleague from the international office, Annabel Molina, and she will be helping to host a Q&A session at the, end of the, uh, at the end of the talk. So without further ado, I'm going to hand you over to Zach, uh, to, sorry, to Dr. Saeed, who will just introduce um, a little bit about the, the school and the course. Saeed, over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Dan, uh, and a very warm welcome, everyone, uh, and I hope you are all uh, doing well. Uh, this is Dr. Sai Sharif. Uh, I'm uh, your course leader uh, for the computer science with the placement, and um, I'm looking really forward uh, to start the program with you in September. Meli, as you know, this program, uh, you, in the first year, you will get to uh, you will go through the modules. Uh, so in the first time you will have two modules, then the second term you will have another two modules as a taught module. Then you will have your dissertation in the third term. And after that, you will have your placement year, which uh, we will talk about the details uh, in a bit. Uh, a bit of uh, myself, uh, I hold a PhD uh, from the UK from uh, for uh, artificial intelligence and medical technology. <clears throat> and I work closely with the clinicians and policy makers nationally and internationally to improve the clinical settings and the healthcare systems uh, in the UK and Europe. And uh, I provide continuous support for industry through the knowledge transfer scheme we work with a wide range of industry across the UK and Europe. Uh, I provide continuous research and technical support for different NHS trusts. Uh, of course, this trust is mainly the hospitals uh, that's uh, in the UK. Of course, uh, we do that research with them to address the clinical needs and the challenges at these hospitals. Uh, so, from the collaboration that I do, you can see that my research is a multidisciplinary. Uh, it's mainly focused on artificial intelligence, innovative telehealth, um, medical technology, digital healthcare, and medical assistive technology. Last week, do, I do a lot of research around uh, medical image analysis and visualization, intelligent diagnosis systems, uh, smart medical imaging, and smart uh, signal acquisition and of course uh, you, the team that work with me on teaching your uh, program uh, is all research active member of staff and uh, hopefully you will enjoy the session today with us so the main focus of this session today is to talk about the placement and that's why we have uh, our placement officers who is the key member of staff for your contact uh, later on and who will be helping you to secure the company that you will be working on and as well as give you some training how to handle 
the work as you are studying. So now I'm going to hand over to Joyce, our placement officer. Uh, she will be talking to you about the more details of industrial placement and uh, how and when you will be doing your placement. Back to you, Joyce. Hi, good morning, everyone. I hope you can hear me. Yeah, fantastic. Um, it's such a pleasure to be with you here today for the simple reason that I'm going to be talking to you about industrial placements, but it's such an exciting journey because once you finish your academics, you finish your courses in the first term and the second term, and you do your dissertation, then you come straight on to doing industrial placements. So I'm going to talk to you about supporting you through that process, what the University of East London has in place, and how fantastic it is to actually get industry experience by going on placement. So let's make this a good journey. It's going to be for the next 15 or 20 minutes, but I'm excited to share it with you. Now the first slide. Thank you. Right, what is an industrial placement? Why do you have to go on an industrial placement? Um, the UK market is very competitive, and what it is out there is that there are lots of people looking for work. Now, minus COVID-19, even prior to COVID-19, there was a lot of competition. There is a lot of competition out there for you to get a place, for you to get industry experience. But generally, what any employer is looking for is um, a student that has experience, that knows what they're talking about, and that is able to apply what they have learned to what? Uh, to what they're doing currently in the market. So an industrial placement generally is designed to prepare you for work life. It's supposed to challenge you as a person as well. So if you go out there, if you get the experience, and then you go out to look for work, you're able to demonstrate to the potential employer that, listen, I've been in this place, I've worked, this is the experience I gained in the process, and I'm able to apply that to what I've studied in university. And it makes you a fully bodied, uh, a wholesome person, the kind of person they're looking for, in employment rather than somebody who comes straight from the classroom to say i want to work as a computer analyst and they go like oh how are you able to apply that do you have any experience in doing that and you're looking like um no i don't have any but i'm willing to learn that's different from somebody who is able to say that i have worked in this field this is what i've done and this is what i'm able to project in doing so and that's what industrial placement is all about it's supposed to enhance you and it embeds in you all the different skills that you will need when you go out there to work, okay? The placement is designed to address the demands of the profession. So every profession in computer science especially, there are different demands in it. So if you say that you learn a lot of, you know, you go into the scientific lab, you learn a lot about computer science and all that, then you're supposed to be able to translate the knowledge that you've got in the classroom into the workplace. So by going out there into placement, you learn how to do that you learn the practicalities of everything that you have been taught in the classroom. Annabelle. Next one, thank you so much. So what do we offer? What does the University of East London offer when they talk about a placement year? Okay, within your placement year, which usually is about eight months, it's about 30 terms, I'll come back to that later, but we offer a dedicated employer engagement team. That means we have about eight people that work within the employer engagement team. Their job is to go out there, get employers that relate to the course that you study. They get them on there, they come in from time to time and they lay out networking events. They design and attract employers for you to attend. So different events will be laid out during the year and those events are the ones that you will come in and then you would attend them, you will get a lot of insight into what happens in the workplace. The online, recruitment, the online recruitment platform, which is what we call the employability hub, is something else that we lay out. Within that, we give you a registration number. So you come into the university, you have a registration number, you log onto the employment hub. By logging onto the employment hub, you get through to different career coaches, you get through to different supports that we give you in order for you to relate with the employers, okay? And you also access internal placements that we arrange with our partner companies. So companies like TFL, Transport for London, companies like football clubs like West Ham, companies like Boots, we have arrangements with them. And what then happens is they set out a particular project and you work within a particular consultancy project 
within that. So again, what we offer is a full range of employer engagement team, the careers and networking events, which you must not miss because it's important for you. And then the online recruitment platform, which is the Employability Hub as well as access to internal placements with a range of progressive companies. Moving on, Annabelle. Thank you. So then we begin to wonder what are the placement requirements? What are the requirements for us to go on placement? There is the 12 week employability module that is very important. You have to go through that. You have to pass that. That is a requirement for you to go on placement. Okay, the other requirement obviously is for you to source a placement in itself. So we will assist you, that's what we're here for, to assist you in finding a placement opportunity on the employment hub itself. But well, however, it's your responsibility to actually source a valid placement that relates to your course. So take for example, if you work in, um, you work in um, computer science, sorry, your course is computer science, you have to look for a relevant placement. You cannot, work, you cannot be a computer scientist and then suddenly go, oh, I want to do my placement in Burger King, you know, or I want to do my placement in a chicken shop because you will not, that's not transferable, that's not relatable to the course that you studied. So it's about you looking for, excuse me, it's about you looking for a placement that is relevant to the course that you studied. But we're here to support you in doing that. We're here to help you look for computer companies, to match you with them, to introduce you to them, to get you to do all your CVs and your cover letters properly in applying to them. So that's what we are about in the placement team. Okay, we also have some internal placements whereby we set up some consultancy projects. This consultancy project is set up by the employer and then you work on that. On that. So it's about six students that work on a consultancy project. You gain all the experience of working within a team, which is very important when you go out to work on a consultancy project. And we have some of those that we arrange and that we organize with. Currently, we have one with West Ham United and we have with some other football clubs. So it's about us being able to arrange, organize those kind of consultancy projects. You are agreeing to go on them. You will have to apply normally as we'd apply for a job. So you'll put in a cover letter, you'll put in um, your CV, which we help you to work on, and then you apply for those kind of projects. Annabelle. Right, I mentioned earlier about the employability module and I actually want to spend some time on this to let you understand exactly what we will be dealing with within the module. It's a module that runs for 12 weeks. So it's embedded into your course. You go in there, you go in once a week and it's run for an hour each time, okay? It's generally designed to give you the best opportunity to promote yourself to effective you know, UK employers. It's to prepare you. So we sit down there on a, on a weekly basis and the first thing we do is life in the UK. We talk about cultures. We talk about where you're coming from, what the culture in the UK is. We talk about how you adapt to the society, the different things that you're likely to encounter in your first week when you come into the UK. So we talk about, you know, the transport system. We talk about what you generally were run into on the streets of London, what it's like to be a Londoner now that you're in London. Okay, I know that the University of East London, we talk about the areas around you, we talk about different things. It's very important for you to actually attend that first session because it gives you a flavor of what to expect on the following weeks. We talk to you also about business writing, about how you communicate with employers, about how you do cover letters, about how you relate on emails, and about the lingua, about the language, to ensure that you put yourself in a competitive situation with other students that might be applying from other universities as well, okay? We talk to you about networking and digital identity. So the perils and the advantages of being online, where you must be online, and one of the places you have to be online as a professional, I would say now, is that you have to be on LinkedIn because that's a professional platform, as against you being on Facebook. So we talk about the dangers and we talk about where you must be and how you have to postulate or how you have to put yourself out there in a type in a type of e-world that everything is out there now we talk about instagram and all the other platforms so we take you through all of those and we explain to you the advantages and how that can enhance you as a professional in the world okay we talk also we well that's also one of the sessions where we introduce you to the employment hub so by that time you will have your number and we do some exercises 
then to show you. We go through interview skills. Interview skills are very important. We talk to you about posture, about how you speak to people, about how you respond to questions. It's something that we put you in an interface situation whereby we place you in front of people. We do mock interviews and we help you to be able to articulate yourself and answer questions when you're going for an interview. And that will help you when you start going for placement interviews because you always have to go for those kind of interviews. Um, one of the courses that I'm excited most about within this model is working effectively in a team. We all work in a team. I'm working in a team today in a team of academics and computer people that are helping to put on this webinar. When, wherever you go, you would always work in a team. So we teach you that. We take you into scenarios. We, you do role plays about how to work in a team and the, you know, the feedback you can expect within a team, how to listen to each other. Those are the kind of things we teach you within the employability model. Again, like I said earlier, we, do, we deal with consultancy projects. So we give you examples of those. We go through CVs how you write your CV, the best things to put on, what to leave out of your CV, and how to actually put it out there. And we talk about making excellent applications, cover letters and speculative applications. At the end of the 12-week module, we do the placement review. So we go through everything again, and we try to make sure that you've actually positioned yourself properly to work on, you know, to go out there and apply for a job. So that essentially is the employability module, and that's what we'll be doing with you. You'll see my face, you'll see the face of the three other members of my team, and we teach you that on a, you know, on a weekly basis. And by the time you come out at the end, when we get to the placement review, you'll be seasoned. You'll be well ready to go out there and go in for an interview. Annabelle. Thank you. So how does it work? The industrial placement component is for a duration. It takes two academic terms. That's about 30 weeks. So that's the second part of your course, if you like. So you do all the academics, you do your dissertation, and then you go on to do your industrial placement if you're doing that. And it takes about 30 weeks. Okay. You have to work at least three days a week. That's 21 hours on a nine to five basis, kind of. You can work for longer than that. So if you get a if you get um, a placement within a company and the company says, oh, you can do full time, you can do full time, but your pl the placement element of that time is going to be 21 hours, and you can get paid for the rest. But generally, our placements are most placements are unpaid. But we'll get to that in a minute. The placement must meet your learning objectives. Again, like I said earlier on, you have to go for a placement that has somewhere where you can show your, you know, you can show the courses you've learned. You can show the fact that, okay, I'm a computer, you know, I've done a master's in computer science and I'm going to be working on things that have to do with computer science. Again, you can't do something out of that field. You can't, you know, I, I keep saying the bugger thing, but you can't go and flip buggers as an example of somebody who has done computer science. You have to do something in computer science that meets your learning objectives, okay? Normally starts after you've undertaken the taught models. So you have to have passed your courses. It's very important for you to do that. So you pass your courses, you've written your dissertation, and then you're ready for placement. But you can't say that, okay, I want to do my placement earlier, or, or I have a receipt. I have to wait until, you know, I, I, I will do my receipt when I'm doing my placement. It wouldn't work that way. You definitely have to pass all of them. Okay, you have to get 60 credits minimum. You have to gain that within your taught models before you can go on to placement. Annabelle? Thank you. So what further support do we offer beyond all of that? So we give you the employability, we teach you the employability module and you have the employer engagement team. What more do we offer? What further? we offer we offer you definitely a dedicated msc career coach so we have someone in place now who is going to support you and they're solely for your cohort for computer science they will work with you they'll provide support with cvs with for cover letters with interviews so if you have an interview coming up you can go to them for a one-to-one -one. you sit down with them and they take you through what an interview is likely to be like and they actually run through sample questions with you to help you. And we also have workshops within that, okay? And we have drop-in service. So all you need to do is to call me up or call any, anyone else within my team, and then we arrange a time with you and we sit down with you to make sure that we get the best out of you so that when you go out there for that interview, you're ready 
and you're prepared for it. We also have the Center for Student Success. Okay, those have career centers, they have events, they have career fairs, they have the employment hub, as I said earlier on. And we're always constantly laying stuff out for you. That goes directly into your email. So we send you an email directly from us and we tell you what is coming up. And by telling you what is coming up, you become aware of it. And all you need to do most times is just accept it into your Outlook calendar and you're ready to go. It will prompt you, it will remind you, and you will be there. We also have academic tutors. Our academic tutors provide support with study skills. Study skills are the different ways in which people learn because we all learn differently. So they will sit down with you, discover the way that you learn, support you with that, help you with maths and English if that becomes an issue. And they're dedicated especially to sitting down with you and helping you within that realm. Okay. And the last bit of other support, Annabelle. Thank you. The last bit of further support that we offer you is us, the placements team. This is what we are about. This is what we do. We are here to support you, to be there for you. And we're generally dedicated to securing and supporting you through placement. My face is one that you will get used to seeing because you will see me through your employability model. You will see me just before you have an interview because I'll be there to support you. And me and my team will be there to make sure that you're well-rounded, you're ready and prepared to go on placement. And we also offer you support through the placement. So you're at placement, you feel lonely, you feel lost, you feel like, oh, I'm not getting any feedback, what's happening with me? We will be there for you. And that's why we're placement officers. So we're like your support throughout your placement here. I look forward to seeing all of you. And the next slide, we'll generally be asking you if you have any questions for me. Thank you. That's perfect. Thank you very much, uh, Joyce, for this very well presented and detailed uh, information you. for our lovely students for the placement. And uh, of course, uh, Joyce and the other team members on the placement, uh, they've been supporting the students all the way. They are very helpful and uh, really they are handy to ask at any point uh, of your uh, course. So uh, again, and now, uh, as I uh, mentioned earlier, uh, we've got uh, two of our brilliant students. Uh, we've got Zach with us uh, and Merlin, and I'll hand back to our lovely placement officer to ask them a couple of questions uh, to just reveal some of the expertise and the experience that they build uh, while they are working uh, as a computer scientist. Back to you, Joyce. Yeah. Hi, Zach and Merlin. Um, I have, I think I have about two or three questions for you, if not four. Um, either of you can answer it. But the first one is, what are the most important skills or traits or the knowledge needed working for your employer, what would you say those important skills are that you, in your experience, is important for you to work for an employer? So for me, uh, in particular, honestly, soft skills have been the most important thing that I've had to learn while I've been there, uh, while I've been working. Um, I, uh, I, I'm a, a programmer for a, an accountancy firm. Um, we have about 100 offices and I'm the product owner for a piece of software that uh, deals with um, document auto automation for that, that that company now. As you can imagine, there are a ton of contracts and a ton of additions and things that need to sort of happen um, on a near constant basis to keep the business running. So uh, to run this back to soft skills, I get emails constantly from users, uh, <laughs> and some of them less than diplomatic, obviously. Uh, and it's really, really important to know how to deal with people um, from a negotiation standpoint uh, and, and and putting across uh, the business logic and that kind of that sort of thing so it's been it's been really important to learn why we do things the way we do them and be able to put that across to the uh, to the users okay people like Zach make me happy to do the job I'm doing but um, Merlin I'd like to ask you the next question hello Merlin Okay, the next question is, 
What were the key challenges during your placement? Have we got Merlin with us? Okay. Um, so can you help me on that? Or I can just tell you the challenges that are in placement? Yeah, no worries. So uh, when I first uh, entered into my employment, um, I wasn't really doing the, the, the thing that I wanted to do. So uh, the key challenge was actually lateral movement into the, 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 the thing that I wanted to do. Um, which again, soft skills. Uh, you know, it's uh, negotiation and, and, and talking with my employer and, and, and figuring out what I wanted to do and how, how we could make that, that happen. Um, so to be a bit more explicit, I was, strictly speaking, mainly helping out with the administration, but I had uh, uh, a lot more inclination towards, towards the coding and, and, and computer science side. Uh, so after some negotiation with my employer, we ended up uh, a moving me over to the to to, to a more coding based um, part of the projects that we were doing, and also uh, putting me on this course, which was super useful, uh, as as you can imagine. Um, so yeah, that was probably my, my my biggest challenge working where I was was laterally moving to, to where I wanted to be. Um, yeah, I'd say that was the biggest one. Okay, okay. Um, have we got Marilyn yet? No. Okay. Um, I want to quickly add what I know has been a challenge for some of my students, only because they would phone from from when they're on placement and then talk about it, and I would tell them. Um, working in a team can be challenging especially one if you don't know the team members and it's your first time in there and you sometimes can feel like a bit, oh my God, you know, I don't know these people, what do they expect of me? Okay, what I've always said back to my students who have contacted me in that regard is that when you work in a team, know your strengths, know your strengths. So some people are very good at speaking up. Some people don't speak up well, but they're very good at what they do and they're quiet. Just discover what your strength is within your team and always be confident in laying that out. Like, well, guys, I'm an, I'm, I don't think I'm very good at that aspect, but I'm very good at this one. So you've played to your strengths and you've let them know what you're very good at. And you will find that within a team, you will work that way. Okay, so that's one thing I can give as advice about when you get challenges when you're on Facebook. But I'm going to go to the third question because I'm hoping we're not running out of time. Um, Zach, again, I'm going to like defer to you. <laughs> How early within your course did you start looking for employment? So strictly, I was employed before I uh, I was on the course. Okay. So I was, uh, as I said, I was uh, working in a, in a compliance administrative role. Um, we then started using this document automation software, which I quite swiftly grabbed onto and held onto for dear life um, and started sort of uh, became the product owner for that kind of area. Uh, we were then acquired by another business and they wanted to spread that from a 17 office uh, uh, situation to over 100 nationally. And I sort of thought, well, I can do that uh, is what I said to them. And uh, the rest is kind of history like I, I now manage the software for 100 offices and uh, at that point I was like maybe I should get some formal education in this subject and uh, asked, asked them and sort of uh, spoke with them about maybe putting my hours into a four-day week and, and, and coming into the course for, for, okay. for one day a week which is how I ended up here. Okay, uh, um, okay. sorry, Said. No, well done Zach, yeah. Sorry. Okay. So what I was going to say, guys, is that in terms of how early do you start looking for a placement, I would say to you that from the time you get onto the course. Sometimes people get lucky. A lot of people actually do. Start looking for placements in the field of your study. Start reading newspapers, look onto LinkedIn, you know, follow companies that do the course that you do. So follow a lot of diagnostic companies, a lot of companies generally that do what computer scientists do. And you will find that people float jobs or you will get a placement early because you've started looking early. Don't wait until the end of the 12 week employability course or when you need to go on placement that you start thinking, oh my God, I haven't got a placement yet. If you start looking early, you will get a placement early. Okay, right. The last question, I'm get, again, I'm gonna check whether we've got Merlin yet, no? Okay, fantastic. Zach, I just happy to have you. Sorry? I just checked with her. She can hear us, but uh, I don't know why she, we can't hear her. Well, has uh, she got audio? No. Yeah. Um, oh, 
anyway, um, we will give uh, the our audience uh, her answers later on. So okay. back to you, Zach. Okay, so Zach, the final question that I have is what advice would you give students who are searching for a placement? Uh, so for me, I would say don't automatically discount traditionally non-tech forward fields. I work in the accountancy field, uh, not traditionally very tech forward for a number of reasons, primarily being the way that they split their profit at the, at the very top level doesn't lend itself well to being tech forward. But um, that doesn't mean that they're not doing it. Uh, I've had plenty of people from outside of my organization now emailing me saying, what's your solution for this? How are you How are you doing that? And I'm, uh, I'm going to them and saying, well, we're, we're, we're using this piece of software. Uh, do you need help with that? The other, other, other accountancy firms are taking this on, so don't discount traditionally non-tech forward fields as, as not having a placement for you because they may very well. Um, another thing is while on your placement, a challenge placed on your lap is very much an opportunity uh, and, and don't discount that. Like I could have very easily said uh, no when they wanted me to roll out to the, to the rest of the offices. Uh, I could have said, you know, I'm not experienced enough, but if you are on, if, you, if you're thinking about doing a computer science master's course, you are probably more than qualified to do, or, or more than capable of figuring out what, what to, of doing what, what, what they're asking you to do, you know, you are capable and take on the challenge and it's, uh, yeah, very, very good for your, for your career and future progression. Fantastic. Okay, I'm going to hand over to Said, but just before I do that, I want to say one thing to all of you, my viewers today. When you go on placement, your confidence becomes limitless. You become confident in what you studied. You can stand up in front of anybody and say, I did this course in computer science and I also went on placement and this is what I gained. You then have a voice because you would then be able to articulate what you learned, how you learned it, how you put it to use and your confidence becomes boundless. So that when you go for a job, when you walk in there, you know that, you know what? I have the experience behind me. I have experienced what I'm telling them about. I can do it. And if they don't take me, it's their loss. And that's what you cannot buy in the open market. That's what you cannot get from just going in the classroom. But when you go on a job and you practicalize the job, you learn on it, your confidence is, you'll sit straight and say that, I've done this, I've done that, I've been able to do this, I've been able to do that. That's different from the text of whatever you learn in the classroom. So good luck and I look forward to seeing all of you. Said. Thank you very much, uh, Joyce. That's a really lovely conclusion. Uh, it's, uh, I totally agree with you, Joyce and uh, i'm really uh, looking forward to work with all of our students uh, in september uh, the coming september in 2020 and hopefully they will have a lovely start for the course uh, and uh, as i said uh, the course can offer you a wide variety of interaction with uh, the team uh, and uh, including myself i also teach you on the course uh, with my specialty of artificial intelligence and we have a wide expertise of uh, professors who are on the team and of course you can as i said earlier you can reflect back on what you have learned during the module and apply what you have learned in the module during your placement uh, year and this of course will give you a huge opportunity as well to reflect on that and show as evidence that you can do it and here we have a couple of examples and of course just because of the time we were not able to bring more and more of the students but uh, i believe zach was one of the key example to show how you can do work related to your coursework while you are uh, studying so thank you very much uh, again everyone and uh, Thank you very much, uh, Zach uh, and Merlin. And uh, I hope uh, all our attendees join, uh, join, uh, joined us today uh, have enjoyed uh, and learned from this session and really looking forward to see you all uh, in September 2020. And uh, I leave it now to your questions. Uh, if you have any questions for me, for our student, for our placement officers, we are happy to answer them. Thank and you very I much, everyone. Can I just say that was absolutely fascinating. 
Uh, and my colleague Annabelle is now going to put to the panel a series of questions that have arisen in the uh, the chat function uh, while you've been giving that talk. But thank you very much. I, I thought that was absolutely fascinating. Thank you, Dan. Hi, everyone. Um, yes, just to reiterate uh, Dan, my colleague Dan's comments, um, absolutely fascinating to, to hear that. And Zach, just really inspirational how you uh, just took uh, took the opportunity and just really use it to your advantage. And it's so great to hear uh, you're doing so well because of it. I think it's just an inspiration of the kind of students that we have here. So thanks so much. Thank um, so we received some fantastic questions um, and I'm sure uh, our audience are very excited to hear what you'll have to say about this. Um, so the first question that we have is, what industry partners do we have within the UK? Great. Um, uh, Joyce, would you like to put some light yes. on this? Uh, yes, it would depend on, um, obviously, the industries that the partners that we have depend on the courses that we do. But in terms of computer science um, partners, we work with Transport for London. And within Transport for London, the engineering and computing department. So we work with those ones. We work with West Ham United. We work with Boots. We work with a lot of independent um, computer science boards. Um, so, for example, as at yesterday, I had someone who was going to go on to placement with um, a taxi ring, but they wanted her. They wanted her to work in their data computing center. So we have loads of data computing centers and um, I, BT. Actually, I've got some students who work with BT as well. So it depends. People work with Sky, okay, and some uh, we've got Atkins. From the top of my head, we've got loads of them that, you know, most people now have computing departments. Virtually everybody does, okay. So we definitely work with those kind of partners. I can't remember most of them from the top of my head, but those are the ones I'm working with at present, yes. Thank you very much, Joyce. And of course, to add to that, uh, we, we do have uh, different industrial partner, uh, some people working with uh, voice recognition, image recognition, uh, and as I said, because we have academic with different expertise, uh, every academic has got their uh, industry relationship where they can put that for the student as well. And of course, uh, the list of the partners that we have uh, in the university is huge, uh, but of course, if you are interested in a specific field, like you want to work in finance to support their IT and do some programming for them, you are most welcome to bring that uh, partner to the uh, placement officer. And I'm sure Joyce will help you to uh, interact with this uh, company and uh, make sure you are settling well with your placement. Annabelle? That's great to hear. Um, thank you so much. So another question that we've had is, do you provide a virtual placement option like other universities? A virtual placement option? Um, as it is now, because of COVID-19, most of the offers that we've actually, most of the employers that we've actually been indicating uh, that we've been signposting our students to are actually virtual. So yes, we do offer that. Um, we have, I was going to mention earlier on that we have tech startups, we have banks and large financial institutions. We've got Barclays and JP Morgan that we work with, but that's in answer to the earlier questions. But yes, we do have some, some of them at present and a lot more are developing because of the current um, COVID-19 situation. So yes, we do. Thank you, Joyce. Okay. That's great, it's great to hear. Um, some other questions that we've had is, does my placement year depend on the number of credits that I that I have? Right. The thing is, when you come into university, you have a certain number of courses that you have to do, and you also have your dissertation to write. Those courses have to be passed, and you have to write your dissertation before you go on placement. Now, the number of credits, the minimum that can allow you to go into placement is 60 credits as we said earlier on. So basically, you have to pass. If you have a receipt, you can't go on to placement. You have to pass that receipt and then you go on to placement. So it's not necessarily the number of credits that you make. So it doesn't matter if you then have 120 credits. The important thing is that you have more than 60 credits and therefore you can then progress on to placement. But again, we give you a lot of support within that. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much for that. 
And then we've also had several questions regarding is the placement paid or unpaid? Okay. Right. Generally, because of the way placements are structured, they come unpaid. Usually, you get paid transport, you get paid um, lunch. In some placements, in a number of them, they can be paid. So I would say that it will depend on one, how quickly you start looking for placements, what kind of placements you get, and what you're able to negotiate with the employer. Most employers will probably pay you, but the ones that are generally on the hub, the ones that we source through JP Morgan, that we, for, that we source through the banks, they don't come with payment, they come with lunch and transport paid. Then they might then say that they will pay you, on top of that. But the ones that we negotiate, they come unpaid, but you can find placements that are paid. I'm sure Zach is probably paid, but then he's just not a place to, it's not a placement, it's a job. But you know, people are paid within placements. It does happen, yes. But the general rule, usually in placements, is because you can't lose focus of why you're doing it. It's for the experience of it. It's for you to get an idea of what's going on out there. And for you to get that within that, you don't get paid on it, no. But you can't find employers that will pay. That's Thank perfect, so Joyce. And uh, yeah, of course, to, to add to that, it's really essential to to start looking for the placement as mm. soon as you can when you start, as Joyce said, when you start your course, because this is give you an opportunity to negotiate with the, with them to show them some of the initial uh, expertise. And I'm sure if you the main aim of the placement is to give you uh, experience which lots of people uh, they pay lots of money to get such experience because it's better when you go out and apply for job oh look i don't just have a master i have a placement that means i have experience so this word alone will give you a passport to succeed in your securing your future career Fantastic. Thanks so much. And then we've also had a question. What if I'm unable to find a placement? Okay. Right. First of all, um, on our watch on University of East London placements team watch, it wouldn't happen. I say that because we work with you from the beginning. Okay, we're constantly supporting you, asking you to find a placement, get a placement. This is what we have. You will find something. Worst case scenario, and it's not even worst case scenario, you will work on a consultancy project, but even that you would have to apply for. But it's very unlikely that you will come into university and you've been looking from the time you start and you've been engaging with us, the placements team properly. Of, throughout all the time that you're doing your academic work and your dissertation and at the end of it all you cannot find a placement it's highly unlikely because what what are we in a job for if we cannot support you through that process if we cannot signpost you if we cannot help you through that it's about you engaging with us if you engage with the placements team from the beginning from the start right up until when you're meant to go on placement I can almost unequivocally say you will get a placement. But it's when we don't hear from you, because a lot of students try to get lost in the process, you know, we don't hear from you, we send you an email, we don't get a response. You probably don't even attend the employability classes enough or at all. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, we turn up like, oh, I haven't got a placement. Uh, I'll be like, I haven't seen you because I know my students. I mean, like, I haven't seen you. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss, I couldn't come. And I'm thinking like all over that period of time. In those kind of situations, which are rare, I haven't come across any like that, then you wouldn't get a placement. But you will get a placement, is what I would say, if you engage. That's great. Thanks so much, Joyce. And then just to clarify, what is the duration of the placement? Okay. The placement is two academic terms, which is like eight months, which is 30 weeks. So basically, in plain terms, that's what it is. 30 weeks, two terms. Great, thank you. And okay. I know you've touched upon this um, earlier in the questions, but uh, we've also had some questions regarding, do the top UK companies offer placements? Um, 
Well, that's a very broad question. The top UK companies, I'll just tell you the ones that we work with. Yes, they do. We work with Barclays, we work with JP Morgan, we work with a lot of premier football clubs. So yes, definitely they do. Okay, we're also um, currently in, you know, in a situation whereby we're in discussion with employers to offer placement tester days ahead of the placement period. So you'll be able to come in, you'll have tester days, and it will allow you to gauge the culture of the workplace and allow employers to get an insight into the quality of students that we're putting on board for them as well. Okay. Thank you so much, Joyce. I'm going to pass um, it over to Dan now, who's going to give a final update. Hi, everyone. Uh, Joyce, uh, that was just absolutely great. Thank you very much. Um, that's helped answer a lot of questions that I have around the placement team. So I'm, I'm sure it was really useful for everyone who's attended the session today. Um, I just want to again just thank everybody who's taken part on the panel. But I also just wanted to um, take the opportunity just to touch on some of the questions that have been raised regarding visas. Um, we don't have one of our compliance team actually on the panel today to answer some of the really detailed questions that you have. I would encourage you to go to the UEL website and access the compliance landing page and look at some of their frequently answered questions that really do address a lot of the concerns or queries that you currently have. If you, if you want more information and you'd like to be able to speak directly to our compliance team, we are running a series of visa compliance focused webinars where we'll have a panel of experts who will be there at hand to answer all of the questions that you have. So please look out for the communications for those, those talks, register, um, be involved and engage with the panel of experts from our visa compliance team. So finally, I'd just like to again just thank everybody who's taken part. I'd really like to thank our, our panel. You know, it was really fascinating. So Saeed, Joyce, Zach and Merlin somewhere in the background Annabelle for fielding the questions um, and yeah thank you very much everyone have a good afternoon a good evening wherever you are in the world and we look forward to welcome you onto one of our future webinars take care thank goodbye you. bye thank you bye bye, bye.